I recognize Representative Balcom for the motion. Um, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, on House Bill 611, I, I move we retain this bill. Oh, I'm sorry. The amendment was on the table. The amendment was on the table. Okay. Is the maker of the amendment okay with not taking any action on it? Correct. Keep it in the file. Yeah, we'll have it in the file. Okay. Yes. Um, is there a second to this motion here? Rep. Simbo. To Okay, I, I know that uh, in our caucus, and, and I you know, noticed when there was a hearing, that there is, there's a lot of concern with this particular bill. Um, a lot of people have a lot of problems with it. I think it needs a lot more work, and that's why I'm going to read it. Thank you. I'll just say that I think there are so many problems with this bill. There are times when the committee could just say to the sponsor, who didn't even show up, I believe. No, he's here. Well, he was here. Eventually, he was here. We have one. We have two people speak on this bill. We have tons of problems with it. Why retain it? Just kill it and let the sponsor people put it back together in a reasonable manner. Further discussion, Representative Cornelli. Uh, I think, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think when the sponsor um, testified, he. It was a rush situation, and he said he was fine with, with retaining the bill. I think that there are uh, some interesting aspects to it, um, as well as with the uh, amendment that was uh, proposed by Representative Moore. Um, and so I, I think that there is work to be done, because I think there are issues surrounding um, transparency. Um, and I think that those do need to be uh, addressed. And so I think you could do the, that by uh, taking uh, closer examination with uh, a little greater time, looking at this bill and the um, amendment, and um, I would rec hope to be recognized later on yes. for another suggestion. Mm -hmm. Great. Further discussion? Yes, Representative Moore. Yeah, um, I heard everybody saying, I, I think the main concern is the transparency issue uh, as far as getting some some oversight on this thing. You know, we have, we have a timeline, so I think a, a more uh, kind of explanation on why it's being retained or what the intent of it being retained is for. Because again, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, we're talking about the waiver on the bill, the child left behind, and you know, being, being very soon. Um, a little explanation on that for the public and the Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I don't always feel that passing laws creates transparency. Sometimes I think it's, it's better if a statement is made, which we've done in the past by this, um, by this board or through a study committee or in, in retention or whatever. I, I'm not in favor of retaining this one. But um, we can make statements and send letters to the Department of Education which are always responded to. And I think it's important that instead of putting more and more and more laws on the book, that we maybe review laws that are in there and just change one or two words and, and eliminate a lot of laws. I think it's more important to have a dialogue between the Education Committee the Legislative Oversight Committee on Education and the State Board of Education and the, and the Department of Education to be on the same page. And I just got done saying that to a couple of people in the hallway about getting together and being on the same page for kids and for education. And I don't think that nitpicking and micromanaging the Department of Education is the way to go. There have been some extreme controversies among them. There, I have said much this year. There, there have been some extreme controversies this year. There have been a lot of issues. There have been a lot of concerns. And I, and I, for one, have been one of those people who have had concerns. And I think it's important that everybody get together on the same page, maybe even have a conference together at some point this summer where everybody gets together 
and and it airs some of these issues in a in a professional manner and maybe make some changes that will start in the fall that don't have to be put into law. Thank you. First Senator Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just feel that the issues in this bill are multiple and complex. And I think you could retain it uh, for the entire year and you would not resolve the issues that are involved in this bill. Um, we are retaining, what, eight bills? We have how many bills have we decided to retain? Eight or ten? I, I, I stopped counting. I stopped counting. So I don't know about the rest of you, but I plan to have a nice summer and, and fall. <laughs> and I, I just feel that because of the intensity uh, that would be involved in looking at this, I cannot support retain, and I would only support ITL. Uh, I'll come back to the Before year. we go any further with other, I, I just want to say a couple things here. That I think everybody in this room recognizes that the way the amendment and, and the bill itself are written, there's a, a number of areas which are, it's very complex, very convoluted, when dealing with grants and contracts and agreements and waivers and all that, um, there's a lot to it. I think, though, from my perspective, there is a concern, and the concern is communication. Um, and yes, there is a process which is available to us. And if you look in statute, I can't find the exact statute, I can't read that far to that computer. <laughs> But there's a process in which we can communicate this committee right here, not the oversight committee, but the education committee of the house can communicate directly with the state board of education. And we can request that there be an item placed on that docket, or we can communicate to them, and they have to put it on the next meeting docket. The concern I think we all share is that we're going forward with a waiver request that's going forward this month. I don't believe there's anybody sitting at these tables that's seen that waiver. And that waiver contains where we're going with no child left behind in years to come. I think it's only fair that the waiver not be so confidential that nobody sees. Yes, we've heard a few things. One. Yeah, we're looking at the SAT, which is wonderful. We've got some pilot programs going. That's wonderful, too. But there's more to it. Yeah. And, and I, this committee is, is expressing concern that we want to be engaged. And the oversight committee, which we have available to us, those members have not even been appointed as of this moment. And again, we're going past a deadline. So. I, for one, feel it's time that this committee, on its lonesome, directly contact the state board and saying we want, would like to you know, go forward with a discussion, and as you're saying, this would be open, it would be transparent, and rather than going through statute and all that, holding this, I do support. Because if we don't have a, a polite, well, we'll get a polite reception, but an open reception, then we have something to come back with. I don't plan to sit down planning this summer either to go through grants and agreements and waivers and all this. Um, we're getting to the point where we're having to micromanage. We shouldn't have to do that. So that, that I think that expresses a little bit where uh, many of us are coming from. So going, I'll go over to <coughs> right, and then over here. Um, what I was trying to get across earlier is I suspect and I concur with you as to our desire to see that much of what the waiver is going forward is a reflection of what we talked about last term, as was the previous waiver. I think when we talk about communication here, it, it works both ways. And it seems to me, if we wish to see this waiver before it finalized and goes through, this may seem too simple, but why don't we just ask? Yeah. And, and, and I, I, I do not understand going through this retaining or anything else because if it doesn't pass the governor, we're not going to have it anyway. So I do not understand why we can't just communicate with the Department of Education or the State Board that we want to see the waiver before it goes to Washington. And, and that's so, what we're trying to do. I am at 2 o'clock this afternoon with the Deputy Commissioner. And 
and we are going to, I think we do need to talk with uh, the state board and, and indicate that we're, we're in this boat together, all four kids, and we, I, I think everybody has a common denominator. So, you know, I don't see any harm in opening up channels of discussion, because it is, it's getting fragmented, it's getting pulled apart, and, and we need to bring this thing together. This process, I think, that I just laid out will be a, a wonderful step forward. Uh, whether we retain this or not, I, I think retaining it, though, leaves something available so that if we have to act on something later on this session, it can be done. But if you kill it, it's done. Yes, Representative. Well, Got just this is your, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If you were to call the Department of Education, you'll have a meeting this afternoon at two o'clock on the waiver. That well, would be an invitation yeah. to come and discuss the waiver with the entire committee. I'm sure that there would be someone from the department that would be willing to come and discuss the waiver. I mean, you and I have been on this committee now for five years, and we know any time an issue has come up. If we call the department, they are here at our convenience, or we go there at our convenience. And so I think that might be a possibility for the committee members if they want to. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to say to this particular bill, I find it onerous and totally disrespectful in its language. Therefore, I believe that this bill should be ITL. And I agree with you that we need to have conversations, but I don't think we need to have a conversation about this bill. It's poorly written. It's bad. And that's my comment. Thank you. Further discussion? Representative Cook. I just had a question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, in response to Representative Powell. Is there any way if we could ask for a copy of the waiver? Like physically, instead of just talking about it? Can we, like, actually read it, look at it? I mean, can we, like go there because that's really what we want. We want transparency and accountability and can't we, instead of just saying could someone come from the department, bring bring the document. Is the document available? Can, is it online? Okay, great. I'm sorry. I don't know it's it's a put it on transparency. Or put it online. I'm sorry. I mean like can we just cut to the chase and stop this monkey circus. It's like we want to know. We have a right to know. Let's know. So we don't need uh, why don't we need it? Heather. You Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So the current waiver is, is <clears throat> online. The, we, we have in our timeline, that's why um, Deputy Leather has been um, in, in touch with you, to find out the process that the chairman would like to go through so that we can share the, share the um, ideas for the next waiver with this House Committee as well as the Joint Legislative Oversight Committee. Um, we, we have all of, all of that in, in the works. We just need to make sure that we go through the process that you prefer, and I think a lot of the conversation you're having here today helps us in that, in that endeavor. Um, and there, we're trying really hard not to make a lot of changes in what you see online um, to the, in the current waiver, except for those conversations around the PACE model and around the SAT um, that we've already talked to the committee about um, and on a, the first day that we were um, here giving our overview. So that we're trying very, very hard to not, you know, make a lot of other drastic changes. We're trying to stay the course and, and, and keep moving forward. But we, we would love, we always love your input. Um, to, and and we, we reach out to members often and um, to say that we're trying to hold something back. But the reason why the draft isn't online is because there isn't a draft. We're still in the process of collecting ideas and information. We have not put together a draft yet. When in fact, the, the deadline. When is the waiver due in DC? The 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 renewal and remember this is this is a renewal application of renewal. our current waiver. So um, that's due on the thirty first of of March at the end of the month, as you mentioned. And so what we're in the process of doing now is going through all of the sections of the waiver and gathering input from a variety of folks around the state, um, associations, educators. Um, parent groups, um, as well as the legislature and, and so forth, to be able to understand, it, you know, within the current waiver, besides the timelines that have to be updated, because the original waiver had timelines for the first two years, you know, what, what other things should we be updating outside of the SAT and the PACE model? So that's what we're trying to gather right now so that then we can put together the track change document that will be posted online that third week in, in March, and we'll have a survey on there for people to go on. It's the same process that we went through on the first waiver. How long ago were you approached uh, Mr. Chairman to, to be asked what our input would be? I, I uh, 
I'm in contact with uh, Paul Leather and Jenny Berry often. Um, in regard to this matter, it's just very recent. Um, the, there's a number of things which you know I want to share and communicate with them, uh, and that will be done. Um, timing, when things get sent out, how much time does the public have to see something before it's due in D.C. Um, there are a lot of issues out there to, to keep this thing transparent and open. Uh, it, I don't want to fall back on where we were when we adopted the Common Core Principles. Draft in June, final product in July. Yeah. That's not much time to make a process. You know, if you want to get ownership, as I've spoken before, the teacher in the classroom, you work with them. And, and, you, and you, you can't change room in a day. But you can start building up the process to do that with some time. So we need to get uh, participation of all the stakeholders in this thing. And certainly, the parent in the field is a tremendous stakeholder. So, uh, Representative Myler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think based upon your comments regarding your meeting with the uh, Deputy Commissioner and Heather's comments on an invitation to come before this committee to share that, uh, that waiver, uh, and any other thing that we may want to uh, talk with them about, it would seem to me that uh, we should defeat the retention, vote ITL on this, and move directly uh, to your personal invitation today for an invitation to meet with this committee within the next two weeks so that, that input could, can, in fact, take place in a, a very aggressive fashion. <laughs> if we could get a guarantee that that waiver would be brought forward to this committee prior in within two weeks, I, I can support that. But I also believe that I am fully prepared to go and send a letter to the State Board of Education and, and, and request what we put in that letter on the next docket, so we can do it in a very open manner. Yeah. Okay. Now, we're, this is just only for us right here, right now. Uh, Representative Alvin. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I made the motion to retain, and I and I still I still urge everybody. I've heard all the comments here, and I'm very sympathetic to the views that I've heard from my respected colleagues. But just remember, even if we ITL this, we're exposing it. The entire house, and I know for one thing that there's large caucuses that actually would welcome this and vote positively on it. There's the possibility that this thing could sail through the house. I think retaining it, not letting it see the light of day until we're happy with the bill, is is the only. Um, well, cautious thing. I mean, even even Tom Brady takes a knee when he doesn't <laughs> show if he's going to be intercepted. Okay, I think that's 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 the only safe thing to do at this point is to retain this bill. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Thank you, Representative Moore. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just real quick, uh, <coughs> I think Representative Balcom brings up a very good point. I and, and it, I I think this is really kind of destroying our ammo in a way. I mean, I think it's good. It, it looks like it could very possibly be killed in this committee. So I, I think going with retaining it and then saving that as a backup plan and going with your option is a fantastic way to go. You know? we'll like that. Right? I, I also it. think that you brought up an excellent point. You put this out on the House floor right now, whether it's ITL, OTP, or whatever, it's going to come off and it's going to have a healthy discussion. And you don't know what type of amendments, floor amendments, are going to come forward, which aren't defined, and you're going to see the you know, garbage in, garbage out. And so, uh, and I, 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 you know, I'm sorry, but we saw a lot of that happen the other day. And even though there was good meaning and good intent, it wasn't defined, and and there was uh, it very uh, difficult to understand what people were really trying to do. So. Representative Cordell. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I will definitely vote to retain this uh, for the reasons just enumerated. Uh, and I would fully support uh, uh, asking for a waiver discussion. Uh, but I would also, if and even if appropriate, make the motion that we send that letter from this yeah. committee to the Department of Education, uh, to, to the Board of Education, for uh, discussion of the waiver at a public session so that um, it can be uh, open and transparent 
and uh, I think that the Board of Education needs to be involved in that open and transparent discussion as well. Thank you. Now we're beyond the timeline here, folks, so um, any further discussion? Alrighty, so we have a motion. To retain House Bill 611. Sorry. 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 Representative Balcom? Yes. Representative Bowen? Yes. Representative Cordelli? Yes. Representative Grenier? Yes. Representative yes. Elliott? Yes. Representative Adams? Yes. Representative Cook? Yes. Representative Moore? Yes. Representative Osborne? Yes. Representative Sullivan? Yes. Representative Wolf? Yes. Representative Guile? No. Representative Shaw? Yes. Representative Gorman? No. Representative Frazier? No. Representative Schmidt? No. Representative Myler? <coughs> I didn't hear that, no. Yes. Representative Rollo? No. Representative Heath? No. Representative Sharon? Yes. Representative Ladd? Yes. Okay, the bill will be 15, retained. Fifteen-six. The bill will be retained, and I will put a letter together, and I will also talk this afternoon to with, with the deputy and request that the waiver as they have prepared, be brought forward to this committee within two weeks. Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I understand the State Board of Education and the public, but if we have a meeting to discuss this, clearly it would be public in yeah. terms of observing and our discussions and all. I, I truly would like to get that done, and maybe we may even have to plan, I, I don't know, there may be a fair amount of public that will need more space to observe what we just or listen to. And I think in terms of new members and, and, and ones that have been here, such a meeting would have great value to me, and I, I, I hope we can get that done soon. Mm -hmm. okay. Are we all done in this meeting? <laughs> We need to move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. No, I didn't know if there was something else. Okay. I thought we were going to discuss some other. Okay, that concludes this executive session. Thank you very much, and we've got things done. If you have any Excel sheets, we've got to get them to Judith so we can them over there in the next 15 minutes. Hub, hub. I'll have a little bit of a problem, so we're pretty